Well, I really can't see that far in the future. I would say this, that there will, of necessity, have to be an expansion of existing institutions. Uh, I think that's historically a process. And then when they have reached uh, a certain point in size and population creates a certain demand, there then very logically should be the creation of a new institution. Uh, I, I, I do think higher education is undergoing some major change. Uh, major change in terms of the attitude of our our uh, society. I don't think it's a damaging kind of thing. I think uh, we're in a process of reevaluation and restructuring and making a lot of change that is appropriate. But uh, I, I think I would see in the future the expansion of existing campuses, and then when you reach a certain size and complexity. Uh, then I think very appropriately the establishment of new campuses in proper locations uh, is certainly the proper direction to go. It, uh, once the decision was made on the quarterback, things some suddenly came together, uh, even to the degree that as an offensive line, the holding penalties that had been so prevalent are suddenly uh, not there anymore. Well, I think this is, due, this is uh, probably because uh, more concentration is being put on uh, on our job and assignment and what we're doing and we're not really worried about it. I think in, in the past uh, a lot of the guys, uh, have, including myself, have been worried about a uh, penalty or uh, holding or something like this or clipping or something like this and uh, it's just not on our mind anymore. We're just going out to do the best job that we can and if it's called and it's called and if it's not called, it's not called, you know. And uh, as a result, uh, we're performing much better and executing our plays real well and, and uh, it's cutting out the penalties and things like this. It's kind of fun to block, isn't it, when you know you've got the dual threat of Thomas and Hill behind you? I tell you, it's a, it's a, it's a great thrill to uh, block for those guys, including Garrison also, uh, because all three of them are real good runners. and uh, It's a great feeling to block and to get your man down and to look up and see the ball carry across the end zone. I am pleased to announce today that the Department of Housing and Urban Development has given final approval to the application of the City of Fort Worth for construction of a neighborhood multi-purpose facility. The project, to be called Stop 6, will cost an estimated $656,990. Under the Neighborhood Facilities Program of HUD, the federal government assumes two-thirds of the cost. Construction should take approximately one year. Stop 6 will be located south of East Rosedale and east of Loop 820 on land bounded by Alexander Drive, Farrell Lane, and Truman Drive.
not sure, but I, could, I would say this, that uh, our local union officials in Dayton, Ohio, after collecting the facts and after evaluating the facts, uh, acted in a very responsible manner. And in my opinion, and in the opinion of many others, they made decisions in the best interest of the people whom they represent. Mr. Lewis, you were instrumental, of course, in reaching this decision with the union. Was the notice that the plant would have to be closed otherwise a threat in order to bring the union around to your way of thinking? No, uh, we never threatened at the bargaining table. We deal in facts. And we made the facts known that uh, we were having difficulties that affected them ultimately. And we uh, reacted to those facts. Do you think your parent company, General Motors, has learned anything from your negotiations now? Uh, I would. Uh, I would imagine that this uh, is an example uh, to many people, not, our, not only the parent uh, 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 company, General Motors, but uh, to many people. The move itself. Not that I know of, and this will only apply to residents of Collin County and also graduates of the Free Richardson High School. But that will not prohibit someone from outside the county from attending the college? Oh, no, not at all. Mr. Morris, uh, you're just moving the liberal arts section to the University of Frisco. Or the exactly. Frisco We're just taking our liberal arts college, transferring it to Frisco on a 500-acre campus, and identifying it as Frisco College of Arts and Sciences. How will this affect uh, the College of Plano? Won't make any difference at all. We've uh, worked now six years to, to bring the uh, lib our liberal arts college to the state status it is today, and we are just taking that one uh, part, one one uh, function of our university, and moving it. Everything else, the College of the School of Developmental Education, our Institute for Environmental mm -hmm. Studies, uh, our night program our vocational courses and our whole administration as well as the recreational facilities will stay on the Plano campus. Ultimately, how many students do you plan to facilitate on the Frisco campus? Well, we hope, we're looking at, we think, about 200 students for the fall, for this coming fall. And uh, we hope that perhaps this will be increased in the long range to somewhere around 1,000 students on the Frisco campus. Well, you know, I uh, have played, uh, of course, the last half of the season, and, you know, a lot's happened. It's kind of amazing. You know, I was really, you know, down in the dumps after that Chicago game, and here we are in a, you know, winning streak and an award like this. Uh, it's, it's tremendous, but, you know, I'm uh, very realistic about it, uh, and I'm, you know, not just trying to be humble, but I'm, as I say, surrounded by a tremendous football team. And our, you know, we've got running backs who are running the football now. We've got great receivers, and fine offensive line. Our defense is doing a good job, and I just happen to be a quarterback on a very fine team, and uh, I've done some good things, but uh, this is, a, you know, the type of award, really, in, in this in this case specifically, that uh, it should be shared by the entire team. How far does football go back in your life, Roger? Well, it goes back, uh, <laughs> I guess, to about the age of 13. I started playing organized football when I was in the seventh grade, and as far as being a quarterback, it was my senior year in high school before I was, uh, I was switched to quarterback that year. So uh, I played a little halfback a little end before that time, but uh, it, it goes back to 13, which is uh, a few years ago, Jerry. Having won the Heisman Award, how would you relate this award to having, uh, to that uh, accomplishment? Well, it's, you know, it's a tremendous thrill because this is, I'm competing against the, uh, you know, best football 
players in the country in, in professional football, but I feel I have, you know, a great uh, need for improvement. There's a lot of things. I, I'm anxious to really establish myself as a quarterback, and I feel I haven't haven't done that now. This is, as I say, hit me uh, on behalf of a very fine football team. We just got into a tremendous winning streak, and there's so many people involved, and uh, have a, to have a quarterback singled out is is difficult, and uh, I'm not uh, I'm not complacent with something like this, and uh, I know that you know the circumstances have given me this award. Was there ever a time in your career in the service, for example, that uh, maybe the idea of giving up entered your mind? Oh no, I you know spent the four years at the academy, and I knew I had a four-year service obligation, and gee, I'd do it all over again because I've had uh, you know I've had that education, I've uh, had the chance to matured a little bit in the service and learned a few things and uh, I had no thought of that at all. I fulfilled the obligation and I stayed in shape and I was anxious to play football again because I missed it a great deal. Of course it's a by now a highly cliched question but what advice do you have for youngsters? Yours seems to have paid off perhaps they'd like to know it. Well the you know advice for youngsters is it's you know difficult but I I believe the first thing that they should have in mind is whether it's a young man is an athlete or not, that the education is extremely important, that they, they do everything they possibly can to get the finest education they can, they can achieve and then uh, stand up on their own and uh, think for themselves and be individuals and with this education be a very constructive member of society. And uh, of course as an athlete, I feel very fortunate I've learned uh, many, many things from, from athletics, but I look back and the education I have is the number one uh, uh, thing in my life right now as far as uh, an individual. And a question many people would like to ask you, how do you function in cold weather? Well, I'm not, uh, I don't like to throw a sweaty football. You weren't surprised, but you suppose, uh, say, Gregory Portland was when you had to and did complete those passes in the winning drive for that field goal last Saturday. Well, uh, surprise not. I was pleased, I'll put it that way. It was something that we'd worked on, and uh, we were fortunate the boys did a good job. You know, execution will never come easy, and uh, the boys ran good routes, and our quarterback did a good job of getting them the ball there. And uh, I'd say uh, probably some people were a little bit surprised, but uh, it's something that we work on, and uh, we were pleased that we had the poise and determination to carry it out. Well, personally, I feel, uh, Vernon, that this is a much better football team at this time this year than it was uh, at the same time last year. Uh, a lot of things has changed around for us this year, and uh, more of the guys that we have are more healthier now than we were last year, and uh, we are more experienced in what we're doing, and we know exactly what we have in mind to do and what is set out for us to do, and this is what we're doing. The object of the shot is to make the nine ball in that pocket, the three ball here, the eight in the side, the 11 in the side, the seven across the side, and then finally make the 15 ball. And let's see if we can do it. The object is to make the 15 ball it's a legal jump shot. This shot is legal. We're playing the 15 ball in the corner pocket. I hit the wall. This time we'll make it. We made it that time, man. There it is. There it is. These are considered wing shots, making the ball on the run. Made like so. There we go. The timing of it is so he essential in order to box the ball, it's, then they get more difficult. Now we go to the other side of the table. There we go. All right. The object of this shot is to make three balls, one shot. The six and the 13 in the right corner, the five ball in the left corner. It's strictly a carom shot. We have four balls, one shot, 
and here we are. The object of this shot is to make all of the balls in one shot. Let's see what happens. Judge W.L. Lou Sterry. Now this resolution is signed by all the members of the grand jury. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure. Marvelous. I just want to say thank you. Long timers leading off in their 40th Christmas this season may remember those early notes they eagerly and nervously penned to Santa Claus in those pre-war years. Although your memory may be dimmed by more fruitful yuletides, you may recall that early note that you wrote to Santa when you asked for that toy train. Those were the wind-up kind. And if you were a little girl, you might have asked for the hottest item on the market. Factories in the 1930s turned out thousands of lifelike dolls. The dolls blinked their eyes and came with bouncing blonde curls. Its name was probably Shirley Temple. She hadn't reached the Christmas where she learned to wet her diapers, and she didn't even come with a boyfriend named Ken. Christmas has changed little since those days. The overall tradition hasn't changed at all, but youngsters of today have changed. When there is a war on, the request may take the tempo of the times. Walkie-talkies, tanks, and nurses' kits may deck the lines to Santa. In peace times, the youngsters may ask for racers and tiny kitchen sets. In the space age, the demand rose for rockets and helmets. No matter what the world situation may be, those cards and letters just keep coming in. For example, today Santa's substation in Dallas received letters from as far away as France and England. Sightless children wrote to St. Nick in Braille, requesting such things as Christmas caroling records. An honest tyke in Weatherford wrote that he hadn't been good, but if it gets a science kit for Christmas, he'll start being better. The changing times are reflected more in the toys requested. One letter asked Santa to explain the wage freeze. Surely he is in a position to do that. But the real meaning of Christmas came with Sharon Lynn Baxter's letter. Five-year-old Sharon wrote Santa this. My father is in Vietnam this Christmas. Since I won't be with him, Santa, will you please watch over him for me? I love you, Sharon. Of all the wishes that Santa Claus gets this Christmas, we hope you'll pay special attention to Sharon. This is Donna Witkowski of Channel 8 News on the Move. <laughs>